I'm over here looking like Sonic, you guys. I just woke up not too long ago, so don't mind. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, it's your girl Jess Naughty, and today I'm gonna be doing a phlebotomy video. Yeah, a phlebotomy video. Um, I've had a lot of comments saying that you guys wanna see more phlebotomy videos, so that's just exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try my very best to post some videos for you guys um, that's about phlebotomy. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. First and foremost, you guys want to make sure you're finding a school that is a part of your budget. So, now there are a lot of schools out there that are in the higher end and there's some that offer discounts and you're on the lower end. Um, I do know that there are some programs out there for those of you who are under 21 or, or 21 or under because when I was 21, no when I was 20, I got my CNA and this company paid for it but phlebotomy was on that list as well. So do check in your state City, wherever you are to, to see if they do have any programs that will pay for your schooling okay so but if they don't then you want to make sure you find you a school that is in your price range they are out there it won't be cheap cheap but you will have to spend a good amount of money for schooling but there are some schools that will not rob you of your money um, and that you can afford you know because when I started I didn't have a lot of money but the program that I had signed up for it just so happened to be their first time being in my city. So they did offer us a 40%, I think, or a 50% discount. The original price was $1,450, and I ended up paying $800 or $850, one of the two. But um, you guys can find a school that's, that doesn't cost too much money. Make sure you're not, like, some of these schools, it depends on who your instructor is. So if you have a real good instructor and you can still get away with paying 800 and something dollars, it depends on who your instructor is. So don't think that you have to pay a lot of money to become a phlebotomist. Just know that there are a lot of budget friendly schools out there. So you just gotta search on Google. That's what I did. Next is gonna be reviews. So as I mentioned, I went on Google to find pricings and stuff like that, but I also went on Google to find schools. I did type in, um, phlebotomy schools in my area you know and for every one that popped up I tapped on it I read the reviews I looked throughout the, the websites and I do take into consideration the reviews that's up there because it, you could have a, a instructor that's no good you know and it's up there on on their websites review or Google's review just make sure you you look at that um, even the good ones like if you look on the reviews they have reviews of positive things about the instructor i know my instructor he was amazing you know so of course he got a positive review from me on the website um but make sure you're you're looking at the reviews because most of those reviews are not made up okay next advice is accreditation you want to make sure that the school that you are going that you're pursuing or that you want to go to is accredited because if it's not accredited you are wasting your time um, and not saying that you're not going to get a job with a school that's accredited, but you're nine times more likely to get a job from a school that is accredited. Accredited pretty much means that you meet the necessary educational requirements for you to work somewhere, you know? And to be honest, you can get the same information from an, a non-accredited school as if you were at an accredited school too. Like they, they get the same information, but if you are an employer and you're looking at the other end, it's like they went to a non-credited school, so maybe they didn't get all the information, you know, that they needed to work as a phlebotomist. So make sure you you make sure that the school is accredited. You're most likely, you're more likely to get a job if it's accredited. But I'm also being honest with you guys, like for some of these jobs, phlebotomy jobs, you don't have to have your phlebotomy certification. Some phlebotomy certifications, whether you are at a plasma center or a blood donation center or even the Red Cross, um, they will train you to be a phlebotomist even before you become a phlebotomist. They'll show you how to insert your, your needle. They'll show you how to perform phlebotomy um, even before you become a phlebotomist. So you can get that hands-on training right before you actually join a program or right before you actually work as a phlebotomist. Which goes on to my next advice is externship. Do not sell yourself short like I did and 
go to a place that does not have externship. You may think that you're doing yourself a favor by going to a program that doesn't have externship. Um, you might think that, oh, you know, that's less time that I have to be in this program, but you are selling yourself short. When I first signed up for my school, I asked all the right questions. I even asked them about externship and they said that you didn't need an externship. I'm like, oh, yay. That's one less thing that I have to do. But get a program that has externship um, and try to find one school that has externship already set up for you because you don't want to have to go search for your own externship my school did not provide externship so i had to go search for my own but it also was not required for us to have an externship in order for us to finish the program i would give like i would advise you guys to get an externship because you get that hands-on training most jobs will not hire you unless you have training you can tell them that you had to stick your 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 peers in your classroom for training, but that's not enough. They want you to have that 100 sticks. And in class, in schooling that does not have um, externships, you will not get that 100 sticks in depending on the length of the class. So find a school that has externship. The external ship will get you comfortable with drawing blood. Um, it'll even get you comfortable with like, you know, when it's time for you to do your, your final exam and they have to watch you do it. You'll be comfortable. But with externship, man, you might even get a job after externship. You might be so good that they might hire you on. The, they might hire you at the end of your externship. So definitely try to find a school that has an externship. When I was calling around, um, I did talk to this one company that I think I don't. I can't remember if their schooling was online. It might have been. But I was talking to this one company and I asked them about externship, and she said that um, they. They did do externship, but I would have to go find my own, I think. I told them I'd call them back. And then I found another school, which was the one that I'm attending, well, that I did attend. And they said, you didn't have to have externship. So the other school called me back and they asked me if I still wanted to go to school with them. And I was like, no, I found another place that you didn't have to have externship. And she's like, so you rather go to a school that don't have externship? And I say, yeah, because in my head, I'm like, I'm going to be done faster. But I was selling myself short. That lady knew what she was talking about because she knew I was crazy. <laughs> like, and I'm telling you guys, don't be crazy. Don't be like me. Get you someplace that has an externship, okay? <laughs> My last two weeks of class, I actually did go searching for an externship. Um, not that we needed it for class, but I thought I would go search for it just so I could be comfortable with my sticks. Um, this place did call me back, but it was like a week later and we only had one week left of school. So I decided not to go with them and get my sticks in. But in reality, I should have just gone with them and got my sticks in just so I can get that experience. And who knows, maybe they would have hired me. I don't know. But, um, you know, that was my loss. <laughs> the next advice would be to find a school that works with your schedule. Um, I have kids, so I'm not able to do phlebotomy classes. Well, I wasn't able to do phlebotomy classes at nighttime. Um, the school that I did go to, they had the option of going in the morning or going at night. And they also had a Saturday option. So the Saturday option, of course, is going to be a lot longer because it's only one day. But I went to school Monday through Friday and it was only for three and a half or four hours, four hours. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, I think the Saturday classes are a little bit longer than that. But for those of you that do not like to go to physical classes, they do have an online option. Um, and some online options do give you the option of externship or not, which once again, I said you guys should do externship. But um, if you guys have a very busy schedule and you'd like to do the online um, phlebotomy, they do have that. But I prefer you guys go in class. That hands-on experience is way different than, than online. Online is just a computer talking to you and they can't answer questions, you know? So if you're in class and an instructor is telling you about their life as a phlebotomist and how they did had this experience or that, you can't ask them questions. And if you do, you have to wait for them to get back to you. So definitely go to class, like in class. Don't go on the internet. But once again, I'm not telling y'all what to do. Y'all do what y'all wanna do, but it's just my advice, okay? Some people do thrive better with the flexibility of, of working online because you might have a full-time job and you just cannot squeeze in any type of like physical learning, like, like going to the actual class and learning. So, you know, that's okay. It's like, I ain't judging you, you know, but I'm just saying.
which one's better, <laughs> okay? If you do plan on traveling with your phlebotomy certification, then my next advice is to check to see what kind of certification that school will be giving you when you complete your, your class. For my school, I received two different certifications. One was for finishing the class, so I got a certification for completing the class, as well as a certification for um, taking my national exam. Um, and with that one, I can travel. So I do go to different states, not too many, but I do go to a few states. So I'm already set up to go to that state without having to worry about if I'm certified in that state. But if I'm not mistaken, there's like four different states that have their own certifications. So even if you are nationally certified, it does not go for those four states. And I'll have them listed on the side. There, is, there are a lot of nationwide certifications, but the main one is the NHA. I know you guys have heard of that. That's not the, the best one to get, but that's the main one. Most places, they, they know that certification and they will hire you if you have that. But they also have the CBT, PBT, um, the RPT. And it, there's so many of them, you guys. Search online, okay? But you definitely want to make sure that that school has a national certification because you do not want to go to the school and you're just going to get the basic little certification for completing the class, okay? Because you you might not be able to work outside of the state that you live in, okay? I, like I said, I travel a lot, so I would like to go to different states and be a phlebotomist. And travel phlebotomists make a lot of money, you guys. So I don't know if you guys checked on how much phlebotomists make when they actually start working most of these places don't pay you nothing they pay you about 15 16 17 dollars when you first start off but if you become a flat a, a travel phlebotomist then you're gonna be making money okay but you gotta start from the bottom okay anyways my last but main advice is to do your research everything that i've listed all of these advice that i've listed all lies under doing your research search online call these people Call these schools. Call The school that I went to, I called them like 10 times, I'm sure. I called them like 10 times asking them the same questions just to see if it would change. Um, I just kept calling them. Call all of these schools if you have to. It's your money that's being spent and you do not want to sell yourself short. You do not want to sell yourself short. But this is the end of my video, you guys. I hope my advice went in one way and not out the other. So I hope it stuck with you guys. Um, I hope it helped someone. If it did, then okay. But if it didn't and you guys have more questions, leave a comment down below and I will comment. Um, subscribe. It's free. Help a sister out. Subscribe. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.